Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another. This is probably the the most exclusive episode of Red Pill Tamales. This is season four, episode number 40. Shout out to all the patrons. If you're not a patron, now's probably a good time to kind of see what we're talking about. Because we got more exclusive access than CNN themselves. I am your host, Chingo Blingo with the Big Tamarindo, the King of Spices, the Masa Messiah, El Rey the Foreplay. The Tamale Kingpin. Mm-hmm. Keep going. And uh, we got producer Rob. Brr, 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 brr. Hey, everybody. How's it going? The man that can do <clears throat> push-ups with his beard. Yeah. I'm actually trimming a lot of it after this podcast. No shoot. Yeah. I was going to say, man, yours look real clean in that video you did with heavy music. Like, it looked perfect. Well, and you know what's funny, man? You and I were podcasting while I was supposed to be on set because... For those of y'all that don't know, my wife handles my schedule and a tour and and just everything. Mm -hmm. I'm not a mandilon, though. Don't get it twisted. I know some of y'all heard that when I said it. But um, we were podcasting. Mm -hmm. I'm like, who's blowing me up? It's like people from the video set. Oh. So as soon as we were done, I ran in the house and they're like, don't forget, it's beach theme. And I'm like, I didn't buy nothing to wear. Beach. What the fuck? And uh, Marisol had to hit my edge up on the beard real quick. Yeah. I had to hit it with a little bit of, you know, some of that, you know. Some of that black stuff. That looks really fake. I don't like it. But it's all good, though. I'm still on tour, baby. Freedom of speech tour. Uh, I'm headed to New Braunfels, Texas. It's going to be a quick drive. In and out. That's April 3rd. And then another Texas date. Colleen, Texas. April 9th, April 10th. And then Corpus Christi, Texas. May 20th through May 22nd. A whole weekend. And uh, Brea got pushed back. Postponed. Mm. Brea, California. The Brea Improv. Uh, we have some other dates here. We have Ontario, California, July 14th, Oxnard, California, July 15th, Irvine, California, August 11th, then back home, Houston, uh, September 23rd through the 26th, then San Antonio, the home of Chrome, October 14th through the 16th. Sus. Nice. Sorry, y'all. Thank y'all for bearing with me. I had to... Blah, 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 new Braunfels killing. Blah, blah, blah. Gotta do what you gotta do, man. But, but thank you. you know, it's we good gotta, to be back on the road. We gotta pay bills, baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is great to be... Man, shout out to Mission, Texas. Uh, dude, I don't really do outdoor gigs. I don't think I've ever seen you do an outdoor comedy show. And because there's so many variables and usually, you know, it just doesn't really work out right. Mm-hmm. However, uh, Mission, Texas was a success. So much love um sold out and i want to read this um tweet that uh jerry the guy that uh, brought me down Mm -hmm. check this out this is uh at l jerry leal on twitter he said thank you chingle bling for coming to the rgv as a result of this event we had over 80 people working doing what they love from food service ushers security promoters and comedians we're all happy to be back to work hashtag viva la raza look at that photo bro that's a dope photo, man. Yeah. So that needs to be the new cover for the website, I think. I'm going to ask him for the pictures. So shout out to Mission Texas. Much love. And we're going to talk about what I witnessed firsthand while we were out there on the border. So y'all want to just stay tuned for that. Yeah, buckle I was, up. I was in a boat on the river and I saw some things. Yeah, uh, same questions to you that uh, we had earlier from listeners. If we get to it, we get to it, you know, mm-hmm. um, whatever, whatever. But how do we how do we start this episode? So this is the uh, it just ironic or coincidentally rather it fell on the public episode. So this isn't going to be behind the paywall. It's going to be free to everybody. You're going to catch this one. But any further, you know, updates or interviews you might be able to get from people that were out, out there with you or going uh, or later mm-hmm. will be maybe on a Patreon episode. So yeah. this is the time to sign up. Yeah. And shout out to everyone that signed up and is either on the entry level tier or one above those. You guys are the real MVP because uh, censorship is real. Yeah. And just yesterday, uh, Stephen Crowder got banned for a week on youtube for streaming mm. the uh not for but while he was streaming the chauvin case and just kind of like telling the facts that some of them were leaving out what and what, what what was the reason for them uh i guess putting him in, in YouTube his, jail? in his post it literally said it, it only alluded to like community guidelines but basically also alluded to them they're going to restructure what their community guidelines are when it comes to certain things that you talk about. Basically targeting conservative type of information. Restructure community guidelines for YouTube. Yeah. Again, if you enjoy this type of conversation, <laughs> make sure you go to patreon.com and sign up. Um, it just It's just a different system, a different model to where 
we are, we're not at the mercy of big tech. That's what we're trying to get around. We, we don't want to be at the mercy of big tech to where you can't have a discussion. You can't bring up facts. Uh, you can't talk about the other side of the opinion. And, you know, because if y'all don't see it yet, you know, you really got to stick to the official narrative. That's kind of like America's version of a social credit score. Mm-hmm. You know how China got the social credit score, right? Right. To where you do something and people, uh, somehow, I don't know, I guess the government says, bloop, minus two, bloop, minus 10. Oh, can't get an Uber now. Bloop, minus 20. Oh, can't work there anymore. You know, minus 25, you know. And with us, it's, what'd you say on Twitter? Right. And so on. But um, yeah, so in on a future Patreon episode, I definitely want to go into more detail about this border crisis and what I witnessed firsthand. So you can't tell me it's not a crisis and you can't tell me it ain't wide open because yeah. we literally witnessed just doop, boop, the rafts just going boop, back and forth, back and forth. ¿De dónde vienen? Honduras, ¿de dónde vienen? Guatemala, you know, ¿cuánto, cuánto cruzar? You know, how long did it take y'all to get here? Cuatro meses, you know what I mean? You hear babies crying. We're going to get into that. But where do we begin, Rob? Dude, the trip. Y'all guys went out of town. So after we recorded on... Uh, Thursday, you mm-hmm. guys left that same afternoon, right? Yeah. And, and six mile trek all the way down there. Let's, six, uh, about, what, five and a half hours? Five and a half yeah. hours. Uh-huh. So how was the weekend? Walk us through it. Outside show, looked like it was popping. Yeah, so um, we we drove down. We were going to fly, but once we started looking like, oh, the flights don't even land in McAllen. They land in Harlingen. Now you got to bug somebody and take an hour drive to Mission. But anyway, that's RGV Geography 101. <laughs> But uh, it was a cool road trip, you know. My wife and I drove down there. We met up with uh, Ralph Barboza from Dallas, Javi Luna from Corpus, and um, Raymond Orta. From How the, was that? Have you ever worked with him? Raymond, only like once. When I was like super beginner, like super green. I see a lot of people comment that y'all should do shows together, and I, I didn't know if you ever had. Man, he's amazing. Yeah. Uh, you know, thankfully, I mean, he was like the perfect host for this event because... You know, you can look at it one way where it's like, man, it's a bunch of food trucks. Okay, craft brew. That's cool. It has a little bit of pyrotechnics on stage. Okay, that's cool. But I was like roasting the situation. When I was up there, I'm like, man, I always wanted to do comedy in a parking lot across from a subway in a family dollar. You know, hey, if y'all want anything from churches, I think they can hear, hear me from here. Uh, see, number three. And uh, I was roasting the situation. But I saw in my comments where people were like tagging Governor Newsom, saying Mm. this is what freedom looks like, you tyrant. Mm. You know, but I guess they're allowed to do outdoor comedy over there, so he'd probably be like, blocked. (laughs) But uh, it was great, man. Um, Throughout the years, I've I've gone down to the RGV, the 956, a ton of times, you know. Uh, There was a record store, I don't know if it's still there, called uh, Memes, and it's this, this gentleman... He had his daughters there all working, family affair, and um, we sold a lot of CDs out of there. But I just love it down there. It, it's booming. It's a. It's in a bubble. They're in their own little world, mm-hmm. right? It's like it has its own culture where the white boys down there, they were like, nobody, you know, nah, nobody dude. Yeah, we were over there, man. We were down there, and it, it was got your bad. Like, they'll throw in, yes, yeah, bro. Like, it, it, y'all, could, y'all could let me know in the comments, but... Anywhere like Laredo or down all the way to Brownsville, McAllen, there's going to be a little bit of diversity. Not really, but there's a couple <laughs> black folk, a couple white folk. Not really, not many. <laughs> More people like us. Yeah, and it's mostly Mexicans. It's like El Valle. So over there, it's its own language. It's just like, nombre ahorita, mira, hey, watch out, está watchando, yeah, you called me right in this day. We're going to go over here ahorita right now. And you, you catch all of it, but your brain has to kind of like, oh, shit. I remember one time we went down there to the mall. And we went to this uh, American Eagle looking for some jeans or something. And the dude's like, oh, okay, I'll help you out, sir. Just let me know, you know, whatever you need, boss. And then he's like, so where are y'all from? We tell him we're from Houston. He's like, oh, yeah, I used to live there for a little while, but no me gustó. I didn't didn't like it. It's like, what What happened? What didn't you like about it? Too big? Too much traffic? Too polluted? They're like, no, too diverse. <laughs> I was like, are you serious? He's like, yeah, I, I did all. I'm chinitos, Haitian. Nah, acá, acá, más calmado. Acá está más calmado. Acá en el RG, acá en el Bayuco está todo más calmado. Compa, hey, but let me know, mira, esto te van two for one. Aquí, mira, 20% off. Uh, meanwhile, McAllen's like one of the biggest, I think it's like the fifth or sixth, sixth biggest city in the in the country, I think. It's on the list population-wise, I think. I'm going to look McAllen, it up. McAllen, Texas. Yeah, dude. 
Top 10? It's up there. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll look it well, up. You, well, you got New York, LA, Chicago, Ch- Chicago Houston, Phil- Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, you're probably going to have like a Phoenix in there, maybe like a San Jose, maybe, I don't know, like a Denver, Albuquerque. But I ain't know it was McAllen. Rob putting out fake news, man. It's what we do here at the RPT. You can have YouTube kick us off. <laughs> that is not the correct statistic. Uh, McAllen's the largest city in Hidalgo County, Texas. United States. It's 22nd most po- uh, populous state in Texas. Oh, in Texas. In Tex- I think it was in the country. This one says 22nd most populous city in Texas. Okay. 22nd in Texas? I would think it ranks higher than number 22. I did too. Because you're going to have like... Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, Austin, El Paso. You know, put a pinch of fake news everywhere. Because I know, because we know somebody that works down there for McAllen, and uh, I remember they're talking about how big their their economy was there. Well, yeah, I mean, some of their malls and retail outlets get like a shit ton of traffic because you're getting people from Reynosa and Matamoros, you know, Vallehermoso, Tamaulipas, Saludos, crossing over and hitting the mall and. So, shit i don't know the stat but there's a lot it's, it's actually the whole point of it is the big boom it's economy booming. down yeah there. it's booming it's a you know it's beautiful man it's beautiful um people are great they were man and i, I thanked them from the jump because it was sold out it was like a thousand people out there and i just said you know i was like hey man cheers to y'all because y'all are the real fans a lot i, yeah. piss, I pissed off a lot of people and uh, i was on super sammy's podcast yesterday oh how was that and we only veered off into politics once mm-hmm. so I- i'm gonna text him to say hey man if you need to cut that out cut it out <laughs> yeah because uh, he got a whole bunch of furniture to sell he sure does uh, shout out to exclusive furniture man he-, he gave me a tour of the warehouse it was mm-hmm. like ridiculous big operation it huh? was like what the hell what like it's like Grand Canyons, the aisles, because mm-hmm. you need them forklifts that go like 100 feet up to grab a mattress or right. a dresser and then come back down. So you just see, and it kind of gave me anxiety. I'm like, we got to walk through there. Do you got a golf cart maybe we <laughs> yeah. take? Can we go around? Because <laughs> goddamn, it's like, it's the biggest. It's like I, an Amazon center for furniture? Basically, yeah. Damn. Yeah. But yeah, man, a lot of people don't don't uh, believe this biden border crisis they don't and that was one of the points on the list there for today is that uh you google it finally i say finally because yeah it's been a hot minute now you can see that msm mainstream media uh wall street journal washington post uh newsweek are writing these articles and titling them biden's border crisis Mm, okay and it's been a hot minute since anybody has i guess admittedly you know gone in that direction but we're here it's inevitable you, uh, as an entertainer, as a public figure, had his own experiences, and I'm sure have your own content that we'll be putting out on your platforms. Well, I want to talk to you. I want to show you what mm-hmm. I have. Mm-hmm. We didn't have a chance because uh, they just finished podcasting for Her Lounge podcast. Yeah. I want to show you the footage I have. And anyway, I guess we'll talk about it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, <laughs> that's what we're doing, right? We're just, yeah. you know, lay it out there whenever you, you know, whenever you feel like okay. it throughout the podcast. But yeah, senators, you know, Cruz and, and uh, Staten and a couple, a couple other guys, I forget his name, are, were down there. And it's just, you can't, you can't avoid it anymore. It's too late. You know, it, we're, we're three months into this administration, going into 70-ish days or whatever. You know, they, they say that like a, a, new, a new administration does like the most, the bulk of their work within the first hundred days, right? I don't know what's been happening so far because they got a lot of a lot of uh, ground to make up because mm. it's just mishap after mishap and circling back after circling back mm-hmm. that uh, I'm now I'm just like really bundling or I'm getting my popcorn ready and just like seeing where the fuck this is all going. Oh, man, so much happening. Uh, I guess by the mainstream media finally putting it out there and calling it a crisis. It's like, OK, cool. That's a win. I guess for all the conservative people, you know, all the you know Republicans, Fox News, everybody on the right, it's probably like, okay, good. At least we're using the right language. Yeah. So that's kind of symbolic, right? Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of Mexican Americans don't even know, like they don't even. I guess my thing is this: people like to assume and just say, "Oh, it's been happening, Chingo. What's the difference? All of them had kids in cages and, you know, get over it. Just focus on what you could stick to music mm. or whatever, right?" My frustration is, do you even understand how immigration isn't even the same? Like paying a coyote isn't even the same as what it used to be. That's first of all one big 
distinction. Before we talk about comparing and contrasting policies, what did Trump do when he got hit with a surge and he had a crisis? What, what you know, before we even talk about policy, we have to acknowledge that back in the day, the whole coyote system used to be a little family, let's just say a family from Mexico, wants to go to the U.S., and if this is the way they want to do it, like back when my parents, like I guess in the 70s, back when my parents came over here, it was one of those things where you just get a permiso, like a visa, and it wasn't even a big deal. It's just kind of like, yeah, yeah, get, get you a permiso, and then you kind of overstay it, and then you just live in here, basically, <laughs> right? Now you got to work backwards and then figure out your paperwork so they, you know, they're citizens now. But back in the day, let's just say you're low family from Mexico, you pay the coyote some money. It's usually a person who knows how to smuggle, knows how to traffic. They know their way around the river. They probably have like a little lookout, just a small operation, you know, and the family would just get crossed somehow, some way. Let's just say shit, trunk, trunk of a car or some crazy shit, right? And now you're on your own. It's one of those like, okay, just head north and follow the railroad tracks. And when they veer into a Y, stick to the right. And before you know it, you're in this town mm -hmm. or something. Now it's, you're coming from Honduras. You have to join a caravan. Sometimes it might be a little 12-year-old by herself. It might be a mom and her two-year-old, right? Just different scenarios. You're having to cross multiple borders and... It's no longer just a coyote. Now you're dealing with the cartels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> the cartels are involved. Whether, and I want to—that's why I want to be careful about what the hell I say and what the hell I saw, because <laughs> I ain't no snitch. I really ain't seen nothing. Technically, this is a comedy podcast. First, this is entertainment, and I really don't have much influence. I've only been in a couple little movies, and I'm not—I'm not Hollywood to where I have a big influence. So don't worry about me. Let's just put that out there. But now you're dealing with transnational criminal organizations that are ruthless. So a lot of times when they pay the $20,000 or $10,000, six thousand, whatever these thousands of dollars, right? Because you hear different accounts. These folks are involved in your life a lot of times even after you, you get caught and released and you out there in Chicago or Maryland somewhere. Right. With your Honduran uh, American family or yeah. something. These folks already like, hey, bro, you sold me 15 racks. You about to go work at this construction site, get paid cash, give it to me. And I'm a chunky little something. And then before you know it, you don't owe me anything anymore. So now you got indentured servitude. You got this pedophile pipeline. You know what I'm saying? You got little kids getting molested and raped and stuff along the way. People traveling for months and months at a time. We, we, look, I, we literally saw it. it. You hear the babies. Like you see, we, when we were leaving the site where we were on the boat, when we were leaving, we saw Border Patrol had like a group of people because they're, that's their goal. Mm -hmm. they're, they're going to turn themselves in. Like right. they're, meet us right there, walk up to them. Okay, hey, sign me up, check me in. So you see the pobrecitos, you know, the, the Border Patrol. We, let, we met a lot of Border Patrol at the mission show. Young dudes that are into law enforcement. And they're just like, hey, man, thanks for, you, you know, talking about this situation down here. And for the longest, I was Mr. They Can't Deport Us All. I was promoting this slogan and this idea of, you know, la mira me la pela and fuck it. This country was founded by immigrants and this and that. And we're going to end up paying more in taxes than we're going to take and this and this. But it's like, bro, you're promoting something. Again, I don't have a lot of influence, so I don't know if anybody, <laughs> I don't know if anybody from Honduras was like, man, I heard Chingo Bling's song, and now I'm on, I'm in a caravan. So I don't really feel big, a big responsibility like that. But you're promoting something that arguably is in, is encouraging, if you will. It's the rhetoric is encouraging people taking this dangerous journey with little kids and stuff. And it's a shit show. So these folks are basically getting lied to, saying, nah, man, Biden finna do this, and they got the catch and release now. He got rid of the uh, stay in Mexico thing, the deal with Mexico. The, Biden tore it up, the international agreement with Mexico. And, um, you know, first 100 days, you're going to get amnesty and this and that. So a lot of people are like, this is our chance. Because they would tell us, they would be like, we're starving to death in our country. Please help us out. 
Like, ¿de dónde vienen? Honduras. How long to get here? Cuatro meses. And then they'll say, like, the town where they're from or something. And like, we're starving to death over there. Sorry, don't mind us. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it... <laughs> It was it, no. I know the phrase. The way you said it was fun. We're starving over there. I mean, Don't mind us. Like, no, estamos muriendo de hambre. Something, something. Apoyanos, apoyanos. Uh. And it's like you hear the little the rubber of the raft, like as people are getting on and off of it. You hear babies crying. You hear the dude yelling at the people. Señora, señora, andale, andale. Like getting pissed off and shit. Like, hey, we got a whole line of people behind them bushes, and we have people with guns overseeing this situation and here come chingle bling and them on a boat <laughs> looking like some sitting ducks so i didn't see nothing i don't know nothing uh this is all alleged yeah, yeah. damn son yeah see look at this man we might have to cut on the ac or i might have we to got a hoodie on yeah no I, it was it was it was uh what you call it earlier it was, uh, <laughs> it was chilly here, I'm gonna, okay you gonna get out the frame Get out the frame, and uh, we're going to pretend like, you know, last week wasn't a national tamal pop-up day, and uh, we're going to pretend like, Chingo's sweating, sweating over here. A lot of, a lot of facts to drop. <laughs> Had a tough workout this morning, ladies and gentlemen. Nice. What time did y'all work out this morning? Uh, I went by myself this morning with Sean. Uh, I had to be there at 8.30, so I had to get up about 7.30. And, okay. Yeah. But uh, needless to say, man, Marisol was crying in the car after we were done with this little excursion yeah and um part of i'm a comedian too so part of me was like this this is really sad but this whole situation is kind of funny <laughs> yes because it's like bro first of all she's that, pregnant that's your job she's pregnant i'm sure if they were watching us with binoculars they're probably like uh is this a fucking joke like what's going on here are we getting punked y'all know we could probably shoot y'all right now um, <clears throat> yeah like I said, I'm going to be very careful what I say because uh, I know my family listens to this. <laughs> and uh, don't worry, Mom. We were with, uh, you know, the same people that was with Ted Cruz and them. That's who had our back. I like it. But, but check this out, dude. So initially uh, informed with Anthony, mm -hmm. he was like, hey, man, I think I can help us get a ride along and this and that, right? I was like, okay, bet. Perfect. Hell yeah, let's do this. And he's like, hey, man, my contacts got cold feet because that, the gag order, mm -hmm. unofficial gag order, and they don't want them talking to no media. At that time, what was a ride along to you, or what were you explained that a <laughs> ride along was going to be? That's what we gonna get at. Right? Okay, because I was taken back by what I saw on the stories. Yeah. So um, again, I have to tap dance around some of these details, but sure. In essence, I was expecting to go on a ride along. It got canceled. You know, with Anthony, he wasn't gonna come down after all. But, you know, long story short, he did end up coming, but. Through some other contacts, hey man, y'all want to ride along? We can get y'all ride along. So we show up at this site, and uh, we're with um, Monica for Congress. I forget her last name, but everybody knows her as Monica for Congress, right? On and, Instagram, yeah. And down in the valley, like she's got a whole bunch of love. Like she flipped the county red, and nice. it was like had been blue for decades. So we get to this site, and. We're there chit-chatting. After a while, I'm like, hmm, well, what time does the Tahoe get here with the agents so we can get a closer view if whether or not it's a crisis or not? They're like, nah, the homies with the boat on their way. So I'm like, okay, so so it's agents and the so it's not a Tahoe. It's a, it's a, okay, I should address different. All right, so it's not a Tahoe, it's a boat. All right. They're like, yeah, the homies on their way. They just got to put their bulletproof vests on real quick. I'm like, okay, damn, what type of ride along? Bulletproof vest. So I, I went and got a little um, a, a life jacket, okay. you know, wore it under my shirt, let, let motherfuckers know it might be a bulletproof vest. So homies are coming on with the bulletproof vest and they gave you floaties? Yeah, I got a floaty. And, um, but you know, it was under my shirt, so it looked like, you know, I was good. It looked like Superman, like you're a buff? So, so, they, so, yeah. so the lady, the, this one lady, she gives us a quick heads up. All right, guys, the boat has to move very fast for your safety. We're not going to, when we pull out of here, we're not going to go that way on the river because we saw a body yesterday and we might have witnessed some stuff. And then the helicopter came and we had to leave. But anyway, y'all going to go that way. <laughs> and I was like, What? And she's like, look, she said, look, keep your hands and arms in the boat at all times. It's going to go fast for your safety. Uh, you might see uh, cartel with, you know, the big guns. Mm. You're going to see them. You're going to see maybe some kids. Those are probably lookouts. 
uh and you might see some crossing and stuff like that but anyway have fun enjoy and uh y'all be safe <laughs> it's like what <laughs> we hauling ass that way <laughs> and chinga and uh we pull up to this spot where they're where there's folks crossing boom boom back and forth and it, it just <laughs> they turn it off dun, 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 dun. and then they're just kind of like oh they they kind of know us like they're cool with us they know we're not interfering i'm like all right and we're just witnessing stuff we're asking the people where they're from and all this and after you start to feel like you may have overstayed your welcome mm. a little bit you just notice a little bit of body language i don't know I, i've been in nightclubs a lot from my, in my uh, throughout yeah. my years so you kind of get a little sense of oh my spidey sense is mm-hmm. like okay yeah i know yeah yeah, no. Yeah, we like we just yeah, at way. least turn them turn the fucking boat back on, turn the boat on, just in case we got a uh, swerve up out of here. And sure enough, it's like all right, okay. I think uh, I think we should probably get going, guys. I think I think if we stay any longer, it might you know be confusing to them. This and that. It's almost like you're on this wildlife safari. Yeah. And it's like, don't worry, guys. There's gonna be gators. Gators ain't shit. Gators, they just they're just there. As long as you don't walk up near them. These motherfuckers is ruthless. So, and I'm like, I start thinking, I'm like, man, I don't want to be interfering with, you know, I mean, it's a hot spot in the social, political, like, I'm thinking, like, man, the government probably don't want us down here. I started thinking, all the apps on my phone are keeping track of this. Where you are. At, it, like, this motherfucker, he, did he, he's damn near, he's in Mexico, pretty much. Yeah, your Siri and Google Maps are like, uh, error. What the fuck? Yeah. Glitch in the matrix here for this guy. Big time. And then, you know, we, we pulled up out of there. And that, then we see the helicopter. The helicopter is just flying alongside us, just kind of just looking. <laughs> you know, we don't know. They probably doing facial recognition on me. They probably pulled my file up. Brrr, this motherfucker. And, um, yeah. And it's like, don't look back at them. You know, you, they don't think you're afraid of them. Just, you know, everybody just... <laughs> If you, we ever thought we were on a list before, we're definitely on those lists right now. After this episode. Yeah. But yeah, but we good. We good. And um, I posted a little clip on my Instagram and I deleted it. I had a little something on my story, but I deleted it for a lot of the reasons I just mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, it's one of those situations where you want to help. You know, it breaks your heart. You want to intervene somehow, but let's not forget you'd be intervening. Like these, they're on a they're on a raft, so you don't want to, first of all, interfere with the bad guys' uh, business and their mm. billion dollars they're trying to make. And also, you got border patrol over here just trying to let these people get to them so they can process them, and then and then the, their journey be, continues, right? So you can't. You know, a lot of the comments are like, why you ain't help them? Why you ain't give them water? You know they hungry. Da, 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 da. And it's like, you can't. I'm in a boat. They're in a raft. First of all, if we get too close to them, it's going to probably tip them over, number one. Number two, you don't want to interfere with either party. You don't want to piss off the border patrol. Like, hey, you almost had this kid drown. Y'all coming over here exciting people, and they're, they're, they're confused who's who, and they start running. You know, we didn't want to cause that. So those comments are null and void. Um, people were saying stuff like, uh, you know, these people were at their low, they're in a, they're in a difficult situation. You're there just being an onlooker, like, like, like they're just zoo animals, like they're caged. And this, this, what y'all Republicans want. This is what these conservative people, you know, uh, you know, dehumanizing the, the plight, the plight of the person of color or whatever. And it's like, no, man, no, nobody's, nobody is, uh, what's the, looking at these kids like they're caged animals like we were first we were front row at a humanitarian crisis firsthand like if if, you know there's been like uh let's say you have like the gaza strip or you have these different sites like that what's that wall between uh israel and palestine the west bank or something like Mm. that like there's just sites on earth that at certain times there's like some crazy attention, some crazy geopolitical situation going on. We happen to be, you know, front row experiencing. And that's why it was so impactful. It, you know what I'm saying? That's why Marisol was crying in the car. Because yeah. she, as we're driving out of that area to cross 
through behind the wall, <laughs> through the gap that they left. Um, you know, you see the border patrol, like, all right, all right, get number in. Okay, where you from? Which one's your this your kid right here? What's the age? Age four. Okay, you got a six year old too. Okay, boop 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 boop. This dude has a six year old. We don't know if that's really his kid, right? Because there's this rule where if you bring a child that's like six and under you kind of get put into this other pile mm-hmm. and your priority. And basically, if you came without the kid, they're just going to catch you, deport you or something. I don't know. But with the kid, there's a whole incentivized system that makes you want to have a kid with you. Mm-hmm. And that's part of the shit people not understanding. They're just like, oh, whatever. You know, I get it. People don't got time to look into stuff and understand Okay, what was Trump doing? Was it working? When when what's up with this spike? Uh, they're saying a hundred thousand people crossing in February alone, and they got kids at the Dallas Convention Center and at, and El Paso and San Diego, and all over the place. San Diego, and and then you got the ones in Donna. You got the little ones, and we get comments all the time from people that work inside these places, and of course they're like, "Man, I can't lose my job. Please don't like." And it's like, hey, we'd like to talk to you. We won't yeah. say your name. We won't show anything. So I'm sure many of y'all have seen the images by now of the little foil blankets or kids like really piled together in the middle of a pandemic when Jen Psaki, she might get on the podium and be like, uh, are you suggesting that we should have kids uh, less than six feet? We are in a pandemic. Blah, 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 blah. Right. She was trying to use that as a little comeback when they were like, what's up with these pods and these little uh, containers y'all got? Are you suggesting that in the... Well, bitch, Ted Cruz and them was just in the place and Michael Berry went down there and um, I was down there informed with Anthony, uh, Jorge Ventura, and then they have like a few... Um, there's a Maida, I think Maida for Congress, like a few uh, women down there that are running for Congress, like Republican Party. So I think most of their county or something voted for Trump. I had a sold out show, thousand people when nobody threw a tomato at me. Nobody was like, hey, you fucking Trumper. <laughs> hey, Trumpy, white supremacist, Nazi, vendido, Malinche, Tio Tom. None of that. So that tides that tides uh, really changing right now, isn't it? Or, or let me ask you rather: Do you feel like that tides changing where those uh, those type of comments? I don't want to say they're few and far between because I know they're still that we get them and they're there on the content that we put out. But as far as the even if they do put that, I feel like so much information is out there that they can't just be so um, blind to what's actually going on, or maybe to the fact that you open your eyes to new ideas and new ways of. Uh, yeah, conceptualizing what's going on different outlets for, yeah for information and uh and it's got to be you know kind of like kind of like like a ding like a like a fucking almost like a win or a check mark in your on your in your box on your side as far as like okay the whole idea of talking about this stuff is to get more people to kind of open their eyes as well mm-hmm. i think that's kind of happening more like it has to happen like there's too much information coming out not to yeah but you know i guess for every person that's like real talk like where are they now all you hear is crickets yeah ain't nobody talking about it now like where's the marches like uh that one cat so miss towner um i posted the the reaction tiktok i did where he's saying like where are you guys at now well you know y'all were talking all this mess when trump had kids in cages mm-hmm. y'all were just he said puede and y'all were marching y'all had the battery in y'all's back calling people coconuts and vendidos because we voted for trump and he's like Now, Biden has a humanitarian crisis, not only a national security crisis, because they keep catching people on the terror watch list. My theory was that the reason our boat couldn't go left, it was either they moving dope or they moving people from special interest countries, where it's kind of like, bring the helicopter, stay your ass out of this area. Because they said that when they went down that way, they pulled up on them in the boat. I didn't get all the details of what was asked, what, sure. they, what they tell them, who they were, none of that. I don't know if the people that were, uh, that we, you know, we saw some people crossing people. I don't know if they were just paying a tax to the bad, bad guys or if it was somehow in cahoots with the bad, bad guys. But we weren't allowed to go that way. Yeah. And it lets you know it might be where they bring in people from other countries. These are the people that could pay a little bit more. Maybe they're on some kind of list. Um, but yeah, um, 
what Trump had to do is when he had a crisis on his hands and he had a surge, he had to work a deal with Mexico and he told Mexico, look, I'm going to start sanctioning and putting tariffs, basically taxing your products that y'all are bringing into the States. It's going to be an economic um, play, chess play. Mm -hmm. We're going to do some economics until you start helping me out, help out the United States, try to keep control of what's coming through y'all southern border and help us out at the border because as folks are waiting for their court case, they need to stay in Mexico City and await their court date. And who's going to pay a coyote all this money to be stuck in Mexico City for two years? No, they want to they want it the way it is now. When Biden came in, he undid the stay in Mexico rule. He basically tore up the international agreement between Mexico and the United States first hundred days and made it to where, let's say, Central American folk are basically saying, oh, we're not going to get stuck in Mexico waiting for a court date. We can just get caught and released and shipped to Maryland and then wait on our court date and maybe not show up if we don't want to. And that's a few reasons. As to, and not only, obviously, the wall. I know that's a very... Um, somebody, polarizing. Yeah, it's very polarizing, especially coming out of my mouth. You know, I'm not one of them like, man, we got to build a wall, build a wall. But if you see what's going on with these kids, if you see what these families are going through, it's kind of like you setting them up for failure. You're setting them up for a dangerous journey and you're creating a situation where it's not good for anybody. All you're doing is fattening the pockets or the cartel. That's all yeah. you're doing. And you know who they work with. And you know what they bring. In. So uh That's all we saying. <laughs> Dude. So there's a lot of different policies. Uh is it safe to say you need some rest after your experience this weekend? You need you need to recharge after everything you've been through. Not only did you like have to go through not have to, but you experienced that and then did some shows and then traveled back. Do you feel like you, you got to... Oh, yeah. And we're still recovering from Tamal Week. Yeah. Which was back to back. <laughs> Hundred dozens. It's the... And I need to recover more than anything. It's just... What really gets exhausting is is the whole thing of, um, of caring too much and being in a situation where you want to bring attention and say, hey, guys, it's really a bad situation, whether y'all know it or not, because the media isn't really allowed and it took some senators to go down there and get some more images and independent journalists like uh, Jorge Ventura and uh, informed with Anthony and, and people like that. So you get, you get put in a situation where you want to bring more attention to it, but then you end up like damned if you do damned if you don't mm -hmm. like, like you're trying to do some good. And people you know, people you love and respect, people you work with, somehow through the lens of their filter of how they view the world, somehow, instead of giving me the benefit of the doubt and saying, hmm, Chingo, I don't really quite understand what you're trying to do, or I found it distasteful that you would film those people, or anything like that, they just jump the gun, zero to 100, and basically be like, you're a fake ass Mexican um you're on some like basically you're on some racist white supremacy shit uh and you're like i don't they didn't say exploiting them kids but basically like treating these people like they're caged zoo animals and you're filming them and this and that and it's like oh man i know you pretty well <laughs> you obviously don't know me very well yeah like we go back we've worked together and somehow some way you done you didn't give me the benefit of the doubt you didn't address it in a any kind of mature manner of mm. hey what are you exactly are you trying to accomplish what's the end goal of you going down there and filming this stuff and posting it because to me it seems like you're looking at them like they're caged zoo animals and you're out there being a little zookeeper and that's how these republicans and and they're anti this and you've been pushing this agenda and blah 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 <laughs> and it's like damn my bag fam let me delete <laughs> Let me not be have the exclusive footage, you know, more access than CNN. <laughs> so that part really gets exhausting. Where it's like, okay, I have to just shut up. F number one, for my safety, <laughs> because yeah. you know you don't want the government being like, hey man, check, hey check this out, fam. Let me holler at you. We doing something right now. It's something we doing. 
and you putting too much eyeballs on what the fuck we trying to do. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And that's what it is, right? It's what it is, cuz. Uh, to, uh, to, to quote a good uh, Chris Stefano, old fr- uh, friend and uh, guest of the podcast. But correct. let's talk to the public real quick. For people that have that, that mindset, right? Is it not safe to say or okay to say that when somebody wants to further educate themselves on what's going on, whether it's a political issue or just a philosophical issue, maybe I want to take some ayahuasca, some mushrooms, maybe go on a spiritual journey doing some uh, yoga, right, to enlighten my mind, whatever the case is, any part of the spectrum there, and then you want to relay that to somebody else, you want to share it with somebody else, you want to burden, uh, or not burden, but uh, broaden someone else's horizons the way you've broadened your own, why is that all of a sudden it's it's just it's bad right you are a villain it's it's a it's distasteful it's bad i don't understand this closed mindedness that people tend to have when it comes to these issues though they are sensitive and they are very yeah, they murky are. waters they i and, understand and, that yeah they are sorry to cut you off no no good no and, and i i get it if you frame things in the in that way of like these people are at their lowest low and they're ha- they have no choice but to do this. Think about the desperation and you just gonna put a cam stick a camera in their face. Well, we didn't stick a camera in their face. We were at a good distance. I had to zoom in to get the footage, right? Because number one, a lot of people feel like it ain't re- it ain't real. Uh, I have no credibility. What do I know? I wasn't there. Am I just going to take Ted Cruz's word for it? Yeah, I mean, we're Americans. We got iPhone 11s and 12s. We got the footage, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a good amount. But um, That's Rob talking, not Chico. Yeah, but <laughs> Trying I... Trying to keep it light. Yeah, but I, I mean, I totally, un- I totally understand that, yeah. that, that if you frame it that way, yeah, you make me seem like a very bad person. Sure. Or you could look at it from a different perspective, which is, okay, I'll just shut the fuck up and then never... Never go, never witness it, never talk to people, never, never get try to get some answers, never ask around. I mean, you can. Ask, we literally asked the immigrants, and from their mouth, they're basically saying like, "Yeah, now's the time." Dude, I wish I loved anything as much as people that love to get outraged by everything, mm-hmm. every little thing, whether it's Miss Potato Head, whether it's Captain Underpants, which we might talk about, or it's these uh, political issues. They will get so outraged that no matter how big or small the actual issue is, but. They can't have an actual conversation about it. They can't have a debate. They can't have any kind of actual discourse. It's just outrage, 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 and you're a piece of shit, and what you think is wrong, and what I think is right, and you should die. You know, that's what to the extent of what some of these people will come at you with. You know, it's mind-boggling. Yeah, because, you know, I guess they trust... They trust other people more than they trust me. Like, I'm just talking about in general... No one in particular. Just people that... People that come at me in these comments... Where anytime we talk, touch upon it, like I won't even put it on Facebook because it's like, okay, I'm not trying to fucking stir everybody's pot. Yeah. But it's like, I got to mention it a little bit. Yeah. Not only that, but, but when they start calling out these uh, Latino celebrities that are being real silent, I'm not going to be one of them <laughs> because I never have been. I've always been outspoken. I've always been against the grain. That's why I burned so many bridges throughout my career. Because it's like, bitch, you're not going to punk the shit out of me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not going to tell me what to do. You, you, Mr. Radio Guy, you're not going to tell me I can't go get on other stations. Fuck you. <laughs> and yeah, I just went about burning bridges. And here I am, 20 years later. You know, the best is yet to come. And, um, you know, we're just trying to be helpful. And, and I, I think we are. Because a lot of people might keep an open mind enough it might not be this year it might be next year it might be three years from now when they're like fuck we're at war <laughs> yeah gas prices are through the fucking wazoo we have less rights and, and more taxes and so on and so fucking forth and they're gonna be like man chingo ain't that crazy after all yeah and you have to think too as people get older you you these ideas start to shift anyway i think mm-hmm. you know with your life experiences and the things that happen in your life they just naturally start to shift you start to see things through the lens of whether you're married have kids whatever you have a business whatever it is all those things or you, your family business or something happens to where your mind will shift over it doesn't mean that you have to wholeheartedly uh, agree or approve of what we talk about or the content we put out mm-hmm. but it's just gonna happen and if it is next week or next month or you know in the next two or three years They'll be able to go back because this kind of content is evergreen and they'll be able to be like, damn, man, they were making some really good points back then. The problem is that you got to get to that point before, you know, the violence and the chaos takes over and that maybe we don't make it to that point because of the influence that, you know, the media outlets have and 
people have, you know, they can take action into their own hands. And it's like, we're trying to prevent that type of shit from happening. And we're trying to use our words here, you know, to deescalate the situations, share some info, some real insight. Yeah. So, I mean, we weren't trying to do any harm. And, uh, but, you know, I definitely want to consult with you, go over some of these images and just figure out if it's just something that's, um, so that we don't ruffle everybody's feathers. We can just share it with the patrons. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know if it needs to be edited and compiled because it's just a bunch of cell phone sure. footage. Because when you're going on a boat that fast, you don't want to have... It was bad enough. I had the, uh, the little gimbal. Yeah. The gimbal for the cell phone. And when the wind is blowing like that, the gimbal is just kind of like uh, trying to hold the phone. <laughs> but then once we parked and we're sitting ducks, then we're able yeah. to get uh, some better stuff. Dude, that shit's wild. Um so, I mean, I guess we'll keep probably touching on it as uh, time goes on because, you know, we might talk to some people. Having Anthony on would be cool. Having other people that were down there uh, on the podcast would be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah maybe uh, I'll hit him up because he was supposed to come on already. Mm-hmm. So maybe, like, for sure, we'll lock it in next week because cool. it was Tamal week and all this other stuff. And it was just like, in chinga. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, ASAP, we'll, we'll get him on. What do we got next? What were we talking about before the podcast? Uh, the mainstream media starting to lose its shit, like um, closing HuffPost facilities. And, you know, I think the BuzzFeed CEO, because I think BuzzFeed bought HuffPost a year ago or so. Mm-hmm. They're like hemorrhaging money to the point where the, I think last year in 2020, they were losing over $20 million. And that just makes you think like, huh, this clickbaity bullshit type of news, yeah. quote unquote, Ain't ain't cutting anymore. People are like, I'm not clicking on that. I'm not buying this shit. I'm not supporting those type of companies, and well, it shows. You know how they're gonna make a lot of money? The way the mainstream media can turning make, their back on Biden, uh, perhaps maybe. All right. One of the ways the mainstream media can make a shit ton of money is put out information and withhold information to ensure that our nation has riots after the George Floyd uh, and the Derek Chauvin. Uh, trial K- yeah trial the case because you know if the, if they were kind of saying like hey we know it looked like a murder but we need to kind of consider a whole lot of evidence and things and uh we need to take a look at you know toxicology and, and with these witnesses and the time stamp of of the events and make sure we got everything in order and some history maybe it's not the first time he's done you know call for mom and and things like that which like, it's not all that's gonna be brought about and they're gonna have a lot of experts talking about fentanyl as a drug and what amount it takes to kill you and what amount he had hit in his system because it's just better for everybody that the justice system gets the right answer it's it's the best thing for everybody i don't care what color you are the best thing is if the justice system arrives closest to the truth not we saw the footage and we know what it looked like. Yeah, due process. Yeah, like emotion. Um, so obviously CNN and others like them are going to probably do their best that we riot and that we burn our cities because then they can put, pull the cameras out and, and they generate the news cycle and then it's more content, more fodder. Same thing with Fox News. Fox News could probably benefit if it's a, a shit ton of riots, because they're going to be like, look, see, this is what we're against. Yeah. Come take a look at this uh, riot porn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Come come feast your eyes on on where we are in America, and this is what y'all voted for. Yeah. And da 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 And the right, they're going to use, for example, these little Nas X satanic shoes. You seen them? <laughs> yes. If if that ain't a distraction. Yeah. That ain't. A, did you post that on the what did he say? I don't oh, think no? so. Okay. No. Okay. okay. To me, when I saw it, I'm just like, okay, first of all, is this real? And I'm thinking, what context is missing? Is there a third party involved? Are these custom? Did they buy a thousand pair of these shoes? And then they went back into a factory and tweaked things and made new packaging. And I'm like, who's Little Nas X's like manager, agent, uh, label? Like, what's the play? Yeah, who, like who? I, I didn't even put it on the list, uh, but... That company, or Nike suing that company that designed the shoes. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. So that's as far as I've read. I just read that headline. I was like, oh, okay. That's yeah. weird. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I knew there was more to it. Like, but I look at it as distraction bait for all the conservative people. Because you already know. You already know. That's the type of shit 
that conservative people oh, are, are going to lose gonna, their yeah, shit. Yeah, they're going to bite on the devil every time. Look at this. Look at Nike. Yeah. With this shit. What, how many kids, how many of the, the Uyghur children y'all had in there? Put, yeah. Putting blood. Whose blood is that? How many drops? Did you pay yeah. extra for more drops of blood, Chingo, for your Air Maxes? All that shit. You know, I, I had to give me the the uh little bit of real blood in my shit you know what i'm saying <laughs> uh, nike's my favorite fucking shoe brand all right sbs i think are super comfortable they look cool and i've seen the conservatives that say you know vote which i agree vote with your dollar if you don't want to buy nikes anymore i understand that but i still like them i still think they're comfortable and i'm still gonna buy them. it's like hey man they, my girl just bought me some <laughs> uh, some nike units uh, a little hoodie t-shirt a hoodie top with some little matching shorts yeah so you know we're against satanic shoes yeah but uh <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves yeah. republicans no. i'm not burning my nikes <laughs> i just got some new metcons and they're they're great for working out and i'm not gonna throw them away and yeah. it's wild, you know, it's just it fucking, I didn't see the video. I think my soul brought it up briefly about, did you see it? Like he was coming down this stripper pole oh thing. Oh my God. Have you seen it? Talk, man. Oh, so, played it. I'm going to give you my rag. Okay, so as, as Chingo goes out there and takes a he's leak, because he's, he's 41 and has a baby bladder. <laughs> Um, I hadn't seen it. My soul was explaining it that he's coming down the stripper pole almost as if he was like in the Hustler movie with uh, Cardi B and J-Lo. And then he's, I guess, backing it up to whoever's supposed to be the devil. And he's getting, you know, raw dogged through the rear. And uh, and I saw the picture, the still of the, I guess, the cover art for the video or whatever it was, the thumbnail. And it completely blew my mind that that was what was in today's news right that was the topic of the day that was a topic of probably the week where it's just going to outrage absolutely everybody and and uh let me just you know again say i'm a professional because when chingo walks out to pee i can keep this conversation going as you if did, i was man. talking like to Bird, an imaginary person who was on joey diaz's podcast and you should listen to it, it was good. A, yeah i started listening to the uh andrew schultz on theo Vaughn. oh nice yeah, oh, recommend dude so funny anyway yeah, i'm halfway done with it okay but yeah the little nas x video of him twerking for satan he was jiggalating for lucifer he was coming down the pole for bezel what's his name uh what's the other word for the devil uh jeff bezos i think it's uh, like bezos Be- bezel bum or what is it? uh bezel uh jiggalating beetle, beetle yeah he was jiggalating for lucifer he was coming down that pole for satan uh what are the what are all the names for the devil uh he was doing some demonic booty shaking Man, people might think that I'd know more about this. I don't know any more words for the He devil. gave Lucifer a lap dance. That's... But yeah, man, Mighty Soul pulled it up. She's like, man, look at this whole ignorant ass shit. <laughs> and I... <laughs> you know, hey, right now it's a lot of trans stuff going on. So I, I was confused. I'm like, wait, is how does he identify? What's the pronouns? That's a good point. Yeah, I was like, what's the pronoun right now? <laughs> but it was like a shit ton of CGI. He had this whole crazy weird world happening and uh because you know we're gonna talk shit about some stuff you gotta at least be like man baby turn that shit off oh hell no what the fuck ah hell this motherfucker got on chaps this motherfucker got on chaps like even when that movie uh cuties came out oh yeah my wife she's like hey if we're gonna be outraged and we're gonna talk about this shit or if everybody's outraged like I can't believe we couldn't believe that Netflix will put out some little kid, little girl twerk and stuff. That was equally uncomfortable. So it's, <laughs> so it's kind of like, all right, y'all, all right, okay, let's sit there, all right, baby, all right, all right, let's watch this damn cutie, see what the fuck Netflix is doing. And after a little while, it's kind of like, well, I haven't seen anything bad yet. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. it's really not. I haven't seen anything yet. And then it got to the scene where, uh, I guess these two dudes, like, they were trying to sneak in somewhere or something, and the two dudes were like, hey, you can't come in here. And they're like, oh, we're gonna, we're on the twerk team. And then I'm like, okay, it's getting real weird. <laughs> and I think I ended up falling asleep, and I didn't I didn't get to see the whole thing. But um, I don't know. That that was a weird one. The, cutie, yeah. the cuties thing was weird because supposedly they spent a shit ton of money to make it. And what? It, and it didn't even look. It's like some weird dollar amount. It was like a, from what I thought, I, or at least I thought, it was like an independent kind of film that was picked up and like then, some, yeah. you know, like I may a be fucking wrong. French Yeah, I'm, I might have misheard, but look into that. Yeah, well, let's pretend like you didn't mishear and let's keep speculating. Uh, it was it was a billion dollar budget. <laughs> no, nah, I mean, no, seriously, like y'all look into it. I know the patrons will fact check us. <laughs> yeah, uh, they will. All the members of the TIA, the Tamil Intelligence Agency. <laughs> you guys are great. Um, you know, we got captains and lieutenants and, um, you know, that doesn't mean that we're not 
ever wrong. You know, I, sometimes I say the wrong shit. I'll go listen back to an episode. I was telling Rob with full conviction. I was like, Rob, the Derek Chauvin, oh, yeah. George Floyd trial has already begun. I'm it like, has commenced. You sure about that? He's You're like, like yeah. I don't know about that. I'm like, motherfucker, it's on. It's on already. That was a month ago, guys. Yeah. And that, I was It wrong. started yesterday. It was the jury selection process. <sighs> right. But yeah, man, crazy world, man. Crazy world. Who would have thought? Chingo Bling. Chingo motherfucking Bling. The little funny guy that does parodies, the weird owl. This, this, y'all getting political advice from this motherfucker? Yeah, that's when you know you're fucking up. That's when you know you're fucking up. Let's be honest. This is a little pothead uh, stand up comedian. <sighs> CBD day and night. Yeah, CBD. Man, the CBD with the melatonin. Because I ran out of ZMAs. Mm. And you know I don't play when the ZMAs run out. But shout out to Shell Shock CBD. Hit it up. 10% off. Promo code Chingo. But man, them, the ones with melatonin at night. Phew, put you on your ass you know how many milligrams it has no because okay. it just tells you the cbd milligram amount for the entire package mm -hmm. I to, it's like I, a proprietary i, I probably gotta look i probably gotta read the bag or something he didn't read it he didn't read well, it at i all. just know that on the front it tells you the milligrams of melatonin for the entire package yeah it's, uh, okay. it's a whole bunch of gummies in gotcha, it. gotcha gotcha um yeah okay I, I, I was gonna say something about being out of town again but i forgot all in all we I, did we wrap that story up you did a good show people were great all man, the comments were good man anything interesting or crazy I, happened okay. at the show yeah a couple things okay a couple things so um so first of all jerry the gentleman that that works at that uh f they call it the mission food park it's like 12 food trucks i think all of them are his what yeah jerry he started he started with a meal prep company and then I think he said he dove in, got a truck, then he had two, and, and so on. But so he posts up at this at this park? This is all I his... don't I don't know where all the trucks go, but for the most part, I think they're there at the cool. Mission Food Park. And it's just like the pineapple ninjas. It's like half a pineapple, cut in half. They dig out the pineapple, they put rice, I think some zucchini fries, like grilled stuff, mm. some and I think a lobster tail on that bitch. Ooh. And uh a lot of really cool food concepts. So I'm definitely gonna hit him up, just holler at him. And um, as I mentioned before, you had Ralph Barboza. He's on the come up. Really young, really funny. You got Javi Luna, heavy hitter from um, Corpus. And then you had Raymond Orta from, from the Valley. Man, Raymond had me in stitches because I haven't heard his stuff in, in, in a long time. Oh, my God. He was just, he was doing one thing a bit about, he's like, and that's not the first time a cell phone has ruined an event. <laughs> and then he goes through this whole act out. It's like, sí. it's like the ringer. He's like, hey, no, andamos? anyway, it just fucking killed. And um, I had a great time. Um, I had pyrotechnics on the stage and shit. Dude, that's crazy. I'm surprised, you know, nothing went wrong with pyrotechnics on the stage. Yeah, they're like, no, it's cool. They're not that hot. The cheese buzz are not that hot. I thought it was going to be like a Pepsi commercial. Yeah. Like they did Michael Jackson. <laughs> or uh, James Hetfield from Metallica. He got burned on stage Yeesh. one time. Ouch. The pyrotechnics. But when you're a rock star, you just take some more whiskey, maybe a line, get back on stage. You're good. Rock star shit. Yeah, you're fine. Um, cell phone. Yeah, you said Raymond Orta had that, had that bit. Mm -hmm. Do you remember ever having like a ringer with music on out loud? You remember those times? Maybe like yeah, I'm 10. To, yeah, I'm trying to remember. What, what, what was your ringer? What was the, like the number one that you probably kept the longest? <sighs> Man, you know, I really don't remember, bro. I don't know if I ever did that. Okay. To be honest. Because yeah. I, I, I didn't think you would. You didn't strike me as the type of person yeah. that would, but... It's like my song and shit. I was going to say, was it your own shit or was it uh, Britney Spears, know. you know, or... Just, Oops, I just did for, it Just for kicks. Again. Yeah. And then people would be like, hey, that jingle bling, and then your phone goes off and you just look over and you wink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give me the benefit of the doubt. You got to, right? <laughs> you should always give people the benefit of the doubt. It's like, it's like, hey, man, I like the bass line on Britney Spears' music. Free Britney. Bitch. It's Britney, bitch. It's Britney, bitch. Can't say it that way, though. People will be like, you're on notice. You can't talk like that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You, you in trouble now. Oopsie. They're, they're going to shave your beard. Oopsie whoopsie. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> the silliest episode, episode 40. We're trying to mix the it, two, this the two date, worlds. It, That's this, totally, okay. I, I didn't. Okay. Uh, the date, uh, this drops on the 31st. Okay. Dude, it's Easter week. Good Friday is this Friday um about to start a new month whole new month uh the season just you know we're like barely in, into the season 
I don't know what kind of guests we're going to have lined up, but I'm looking forward to getting more voices on <clears throat> the yeah. show. Um, yeah. Well, obviously about what's going on at the border, but also just more voices in general. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's a, there's a whole community. I mean, we got the Lexit movement guys, uh, a few people that are running for office. Uh, I think Wake Up With Linda was supposed to. Yes, yeah, she's still down. She, yeah, she had some personal stuff she had to deal oh, with, okay. but she's hopping back on social now and yeah. going uh, about it. Real Anna Paulina. Um, that'll be good that'll be fun i'm supposed to be on her she just got a deal nice with like uh, iheart radio or something like cool. that so it'll be on the iheart app for hers and i'm supposed to be on there i think in april what was the uh super sammy uh podcast about what kind of what can people expect from that is it out by the way no i think he drops it today okay uh so it should be out by the time you hear this it's called make shit happen mm -hmm. and we talked about all kinds of stuff man um the music business like career stuff um it veered into politics at some point mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I had to be like these opinions are mine these are not super sammy's opinions do not try to cancel uh, <laughs> exclusive furniture like leave him alone protect super sammy at all costs um but you know y'all know me i think if anybody is immune to uh being able to talk some shit it might be me like who who else is crazy enough yeah like we already said on this show, like this is the most difficult time to try to persuade somebody that you voted for Trump and you're not a Nazi. Mm. This is the most difficult time. So I ain't got nothing but time. <laughs> That's true. And right now, I mean, Biden's just messing up by the day to where Trump's looking smarter by the minute. Everything Trump said was going to happen is happening. Trump's going down to the border before Biden is. Yeah. Your boy. Uh, I don't care about what, what, what he does. I don't care oh, about, yeah. What did he say? Uh, I, I don't I, care what the other guy. I, I got a plan. I'm very confident about the plan. And uh, I don't care what the other guy does. The other guy. Man, dude. What else have we missed from that guy? Um, <laughs> what, what else have we missed since you were. And it's only been five, four or five days, but I feel like there was that. Yesterday, there was the. He was walking off stage, and then the reporter asked, like, Do you think uh, states should reinstate their mask mandate? And he's like, Yes. He just walks up. Or it was like, do you think they should stop the uh, reopening process or something? He's like, yes. Well, Texas cases went down. And, uh, I mean, Florida's doing pretty well. A lot. I mean, it's kind of like uh, we got the vaccine, bro. Yeah. We got the vaccine passport. I mean. C coming to an airport near you. I mean, everywhere. You got to have it on you, I guess. But it's for, like, if you want to go to a concert, like, events. <laughs> so... uh you know, it's like, why y'all so hell bent? Why why is this administration so hell bent over? Keep the lockdowns going, man. Y'all can't be giving these people their freedom. Like, hey, put your mask back on. Like, uh, okay, I get it. Masks, you know, from a risk management perspective, should work. You know, if you're over fifty, overweight, you got some other stuff going on. Maybe yeah, wear as many of those motherfuckers as you want. <laughs> but if you're in a swimming pool by yourself. And you got the mask on. You're looking real goofy. Um, but I, I did. I saw that. I found it odd that, you know, Biden would say, yeah, man, they need to they need to bring the mandates back. And I think he did a whole speech, too. He's like, we, we got to we're in this together. And we're, oh, yeah. We're almost there. Just hang in there. Dude, he does that thing where he's like, I, I, listen to me, folks. Yeah. And he like he gets but, down and zooms in. Folks, listen to me, folks. I need you to wear your mask. I need you to not barbecue. I need you to not hug grandma. <laughs> I need you to stop listening to Red Pill Thamadas. Come on, folks. I, this, this is not hyperbole. I, I need you. Come on, man. We're in this together. Come on, man. I need you. Fuck, man. We're living in a movie and a really bad one at that. I think the best thing is, is what, what we're doing right now, laughing. I 100% agree with you. <laughs> just laugh about the shit. I 100% agree with I you. I mean, you got to stay high. You got to just stay high. Dude, I have this, <laughs> uh, that's not a bad idea, and a little buzz from time to time. I mean, look, if you ain't got no CBD in your life, if you're not sleeping heavy, if you're not like, you know, exercising and making sure you get some sun and spend time with your family and yeah. enjoy the moments, then you're tripping. Yeah. Life, man, don't let them steal your whole life from you, man. Yeah. I have yeah. this quote from Brian Callen that I saved back in 2016 that I still reference from time to time. I'm going to read it here because I think it's very uh, appropriate. 
To be completely honest, the times I'm happiest are when I'm with my friends, laughing and eating good food. The other times are when I come up with new original ideas and feel I've done my work for the day when I feel I'm being true to who I am, Brian Callen. Man, send me that. I could not agree more, man, because when you're eating good food and you're laughing with your friends and family, there are no better times. That's it. And as an artist, which you are, and he is, having felt like you have created a new piece of art or you, and done your best, you know, it, it, I, don't, I can't imagine there's a better, better feeling. Between killing on stage and then getting home and killing it as a dad that day or, you know, a mom that day, what is better? Yeah, man, it, it, was, um, it was great to be back. Uh, Mission Texas, whew, the laughs, man. I mean, it was, it was the weather. We can ask for anything, anything more. It was just perfect. It was beautiful. Uh, they brought us steamed crab legs at the end, some fish and chips from one of the trucks. What? And, mm-hmm. Yeah, what all did you eat? If there's 12 food trucks there, what was the, what'd you get? What was they, were they serving you? What'd you well, dig they, into? They, yeah, they brought us uh, fish and chips and then um, a, a king crab, cream, bleh, king <laughs> crab boil. Say that three times fast. With like the corn and the sausage and, yeah. and the and the big old crab legs, and Ralph was just cracking them with his bare hands, ka, 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 pulling out big chunks of meat. Yeah, I was fucking it up with with the thing. I just ate the fish and chips. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> oh, shout out to the brewery. They have a five by five craft brew. Oh, five by five is good. It is great. Yeah, dude, he kept bringing stuff. I for, man, I forget the gentleman's name, but he was super cool. He gave me some inside scoop. Some people want to buy them out, mm. and it's a big deal. But uh, but anyway, it's the he, he'd be like peanut butter banana stout or some shit, yeah. and I'm like peanut butter banana, and then you drink the beer and you're like, oh shit! I just kind of almost like I pictured like a ripe banana, like I got a whiff, yeah, and then I had the little aftertaste of like peanut butter, and I'm yeah. like, what the fuck? But it was beer, so That's it was dope. good. Crazy. It's like uh, after this, I'm gonna go to Eighth Wonder and buy, get a uh, fucking the Bang Bang Shandy. Yeah, the Bang Bang Shandy. I'm gonna get a growler of that at least, maybe one or two. It was so damn good, man. Yeah, it was. I was craving it the entire next couple days after the the mouth pop up. Yeah, I texted Ryan about it. So it's only on tap at Eighth Wonder. Yeah, but you can go pick up. So I see some interesting things on the notes. Yes, you said remember the CPAC stage. They said it was a Nazi symbol. It turns out the designer was actually a Democrat owned business. And super liberal, who was in charge of past Biden events. You, do you believe that? Did you hear that? Is that true? Yes. Wow. Dude. And did they purposely try to make it look like... No. Some? They actually did a whole public statement with like, look, we did not know that it was uh, 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 It was similar to the um, what the rune uh, orthol... Do- I forgot what it is. The symbol itself is called like something dune, r- rune. I forgot. Sorry. My German sucks. So yeah, I sorry, I can't Germans. help you. Um, and yeah, man. And they were just apparently the facility uses them for a lot of events at wherever CPAC was, right? And they all they were trying to do was make the, make the best of the space they were given for the event, and that's just what it happened to look like. And that's, that's usually the way some of these things end up panning out. Like, there's always, there's always like, a, a economics type of... Well, uh, there's also just a logical explanation for a lot of things. Well, yeah, and, and what I mean by what I mean by economics and, and logical is what the answer ended up being, especially like if you're in production and you understand what it's like to rent a venue and you have guests coming and you're trying to put together an event, you know, you go through the motions, you start thinking, was there an event planner? You know, who was in charge of building the stage? Is this a CPAC stage? They haul in, a, in an 18 wheeler and they bring everywhere. Or is it the Hyatt that, they just it, they were in charge of it, and you just go down the row of like, okay, who was in charge? All right, bet who would they hire? Same people they always use. Okay, are they Trump supporters? Actually, no, they're not. It's like, well, why they build it that way? It's like we were working with the space we had, and we knew people had to walk in through here and walk off through here, and maybe stand here and give a speech. So it turns out it's like a cube with some little fucking legs where you would walk up. Yeah, <laughs> logical, right? Logic. So some might say, you know, and they called it like a total, like a blatant disrespect. It was a dog whistle. You know, they're trying to do something here, you know, in, in, in signage and secrecy and whatever, uh, depictions of shit. Meanwhile, there's just a logical explanation. And some might say, all right, well, why did they hire a Democratic company to do this job? Uh, did they then do it on purpose to make the... No, the place just uses this company. At the end of the day, you know what somebody's not going to shy away from? Making their money. 
oh, so I'm a Democrat company, maybe, who has a very liberal owner or CEO, but this Republican company is going to pay me X amount to do whatever the fuck for their event. What are you going to say? No, no, plus, you dummy. Plus, if, if you're throwing an event and you just need a stage bill, you're not going to go around, make sure they're Republicans because we don't want any Democrats building our state. We just need a good stage builder. It's called the free market. And then if you're a stage builder, you're not going around asking your clients like, well, what is this event about? And who's going to be there? And what will be said on the stage? It's like, bitch, we sell stages. Yeah, this shit doesn't matter. All the other shit does not matter. What's your budget? Exa- what's your budget? What's your, what's your budget is question number one. And how fast can you do it? It's question number two. Yeah. And uh, like my buddy Frank, back in the day, he would uh, try to hit me with a lot of conspiracy theories. Like, man, you know, they got them crisis actors out there. <laughs> or, you know, this event really didn't happen. And sometimes I'd hit him with the like, Okay, so you're telling me all these people conspired, you know, and I'd be like, well, what's the incentive for this? And who gains from that? And why wouldn't there have been information leaked if you had all these people trying to suppress this conspiracy? You know what I mean? And, and I would try to think it through. Like, really, bro? Like, why? Yeah. Why would somebody fake that? Well, if, or, or or if, it's, well, if we're talking to our boy Sam Tripoli, it's always the CIA. It's always the CIA's fault, which I can't wait to talk to him. Yeah, and it depends. Uh, because that is the thing. There are crisis actors and there have been examples of all those things. But because it happens once or twice, you can't say that it's not possible or it didn't happen. And then it's hard sometimes to not attribute it to everything else. Just like the um, the Asian hate thing. Mm. Man, that one to me is kind of like... Dude, speaking of, Callan and Tripoli on Conspiracy Social Club, Callan made the exact same, almost as if he listened to RPT and took your take and said the exact same thing. Which, which was what? Uh, in LA. I don't remember my take. In the LA, during the LA riots, the reason that, you know, the uh, Korean rooftops and all the tension that's been going on between, you know, that, that uh, demographic and, you know, that other demographic and so on and so forth. Yeah. And all I was trying to say by that is that there are many variables. Yeah. For example, if you're this crazy white kid that went and shot at the massage parlors, uh, do you automatically assume that he it was racially motivated? He's like, I need some, I need to find some Asians. Where can I find Asians? Because I want to kill Asians right now. Right. Or was it what he said it was? Like, oh, I'm actually a sex addict, and these people, these places are temptation. And, yeah. And I'm fucking crazy, and and uh, I don't went over the edge. You know, that's a possibility too. But have you? There's more and more video coming out. Did you see the black dude on the train? And he beat the brakes off this pobrecito, this Asian cat. No. Man, there's so many stories popping up. Um, like the dude on the train, man. He he even like choked him at the end. And he had already knocked him out. And this is like on a subway. And everyone's like, stop filming him and shit. Stop. Hey. He's bro. dad. And then the dude He's just gets dad. off the train. And then uh, there was one of an old Asian woman. Um, I guess outside of a store, and it was, again, it was a black dude. I don't think it had to do with menace to society. People, <laughs> people took my my little because this shit is entertainment too. Like we gotta talk some shit in between real shit. People took my menace to society rant, which was really just like, look, man, there's a variable. There's a lot of variables. You can't just lump all cases together. But some people took it literal. Like, Chingo, you're really blaming this Hollywood movie on the spa murders, which is clearly white supremacy and racially motivated hate crime. And it's like every time I hop on Instagram, the thing, it always pops up. Like, find out how you can learn more for the anti-Asian, Asian-American, Pacific Islander hate, blah, blah, blah. Dude, did you hear the new Tim Dillon where he talked about the SNL? Oh, yeah. (sighs) He went in. Man, Tim, Tim Dillon, if you're listening, because <laughs> some, some say he's a fan of the RPT. Yeah. This dude is a comedic genius. He fucking broke down SNL like, this is why this shit ain't funny. Y'all, y'all trying to make us feel bad for this Asian hate, and y'all preaching at us about this, but at the same time, these jokes suck, and you're confusing the audience, and they're scared to laugh, because you just finished telling them, we got an Asian cast member is going to... Show y'all how y'all could be more helpful for the anti-Asian hate movement, right? And then the little guy, he played clips of it on from the SNL. The little Asian uh, stand, uh, I guess he's a comic. He's a, he's a cast member. Yeah. He went up there and did like some weird, lame, weird, lame jokes. And it was just kind of cringe. It was like a fucking TED Talk. It wasn't a, a joke. It like... was cringe. And it was like trying to be funny, but it wasn't. Yeah. And... um. 
and then this is one thing he said. He said, it's been a pretty bleak past two weeks for the Asian community. Well, pretty bleak since forever. And it's like, wait, you're saying that United States of America is holding down Asians, keeping Asians down, discriminating on Asians or whatever. Talking about is bleak for the Asian community. Really? Because if you look at success rates yep. of if you own businesses, education, if, education. I mean, if anybody discriminated against Asians, it was Harvard and Yale because mm-hmm. it was too many of them. Yeah. And they had to start being like, uh, sorry, we don't educate our kids uh, the way y'all do. Dude, average income through the roof. Uh, everything. 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 It's like, so dumb. It's like the American dream. It's almost like, can you do better? than Asians because I don't kind of the standard honestly it's the gold standard yeah. of how well an immigrant is able to do along with Nigerians yeah um, I mean a lot of Caribbean people are thriving I mean you have people coming Indians Indian Amer- oh, yeah. Indian Americans Indians uh, Pakistani you telling me America's a bad place for Asians that's so dumb. Please don't don't drink the Kool Aid. Don't believe the fucking narrative is bullshit. And they were forcing it. All of a sudden, they're like, and Tim Dillon said, "It's bad for y'all." He's like, "Compared to who? Compared to black people?" Yeah. And then he says, "It's bad for Asians in America." Compared to what country? He's like, "What other country is gonna <laughs> let you just mind your business, go to work, get an education, kill it at Harvard, send your kids to Yale?" own a couple businesses, save money, invest well, buying up real estate. He's like, what? He's like, compared to where? Cambodia? Vietnam? I mean, there's people thriving in Vietnam, but it's kind of like, what? why are you saying this? Yeah. And how many normies are going to just believe it? Because they look at the world through this Marxist lens of, this is stolen land, and they're hating on us, and people of color, and if you have indigenous sangre, you are no longer allowed, and da 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 and it's like, get off the fucking boo-boo, man, it's 2021, it's 2021. He was making some really good points, too, right after that, where he was saying, this is what I, and I can't even do his voice, he has such a gravelly voice, I'm not even gonna try to do it. The reason this is happening is because you're letting these people, these kids, fresh out of college into entertainment that have absolutely no worldly experience, have no real world experience of their own, and then you come up with this, this fucking like, that was like almost like a one man show kind of like, I'm going to try to maybe put a little dash of something, you know, humorous in there. Did not work. It was terrible. Yeah. Basically, the reputation that SNL has is that they get these writers fresh out of Harvard like you said, no life experience, out of touch with the real world, and they kind of come at it from a mainstream narrative, left kind of point of view. So nobody in the writer's room is going to say, um, is that true, what y'all are saying about Asian Americans? Like, is it bleak? Should we cut that line out? Should we maybe go in a different direction and just make it, you know, make funny. it informative and helpful and funny instead of... You chastise, what's the word? Lecturing. You, yeah, you lecturing people. The shit ain't funny. It's cringe. And you're lying. You're complaining. Yeah. I, oh, for example, this is another thing he said. The uh, the Asian cast member on SNL, he says, uh, and when a Asian grandmother uh, had a GoFundMe after being brutally attacked, she raised $900,000. And what did she do? She turned around and donated it back into the community. Everybody claps. That is where we are as a community or something. It's like, we? Tim Dillon's like, we? Bitch, how many 900,000s did you fucking donate? Puto? Hey, puto face. Puto neck. <laughs> how many 900,000s? Yeah. The fucking... Ma- People that believe that shit are probably the same people in my comments like, Chingo, why didn't you help the kids? You'd rather film them instead of give them water. And it's like, bro, you can't interfere. You can't even pull your boat next to them. You're going to tip them over. Dude, during my 5 a.m. workout today, I'm going to just drop that out there. <laughs> nice. 5 a.m.? Yeah, we got back into our... We used to do that like two years ago. And now we're back on our 5 a.m. workout schedule just so oh we can God. get it in before she's got to get into work. I start you know, researching or editing or whatever. And then we go about our days. But um, nice. that's what I got 
that's what I listen to throughout my workout. The Patreon episode, the new one. If you're not a part of, I mean, please subscribe to RPT if you're not. But also, Tim Dillon is a great uh, Patreon creator. He's literally like the top three of all podcasts on the Patreon platform. He's just fucking funny. You know, yeah, if yeah. you're easily offended, do not. You're probably not listening to this if you're easily offended, but do not subscribe to Tim Dillon. If you like that shit, so funny, dude. Yeah, I, I want to finish listening to that episode I was describing. Because yeah. when I was saying he's a comedic genius... He was literally pinpointing the problem with this segment. He's like, the audience is uh, fucking confused. They don't know what to do. Yeah. I, th- I think I had Joe coming. Oh, what time? I, but, uh, it's 2.30, okay. right? Yeah. Damn, it's already 2.30? Joe is here. Okay. See what you can get him working on. See what he can work on. Sorry, everybody. Uh, quick little pause here for the podcast. Sorry. Just kidding. Um yeah, man. So that that's great. The last thing I had on the list was uh, Captain Underpants. Are you familiar with Captain Underpants? Is that the, the movie? The cartoon? That, there was a Kevin movie. Hart, dude. Wasn't Kevin Hart? In oh, he was in the movie. He was in the original movie. Okay. Uh, they have a series on Netflix as well. It's um. I personally love Captain Underpants. Don has declared that we can no longer let the kid. Actually, about a year ago, it's like we can't let the kids watch Captain Underpants anymore. Why? Because it's like. It's uh, it it's probably at the time they were they're six now. They'll be seven in September. They were probably ending four, maybe five, mm-hmm. and it's like crude, like fart jokes and real, like you know, maybe older boyish or older older kiddish kind of things. And they'd say like it, one of the like one of the teachers' name is Professor Poopy Pants. You know, uh-huh. it's really funny, dude. Yeah. Uh, but anyway the people started to get into an uproar from a book that i believe was published in 2010 where the kids go back it's like um they go back in time to a asian type of atmosphere maybe it was let's just say asia 300 years ago or 3000 years ago and they learn kung fu from a asian master or some shit okay, like that okay so it was just stereotyping just because of that i was like who the fuck else are you gonna learn it from if you want a master exactly shit where you gonna go uh motherfucking <clears throat> echo park <laughs> <clears throat> we gonna go canada to an encampment anyway yeah man so they pulled the I books guess and... they really trying to make uh, asian hate a thing <sighs> they're really trying to make it a thing dude like, when it comes to personal responsibility and hustle the asian people i know are some of the hardest working fucking people in the country so i, I mentioned canada and mm-hmm. um I, I guess we could wrap with this all right so <clears throat> my buddy comedian jason roos He's from Canada, but uh, he lived in L.A. for like 13 years. Now he lives in Austin. And he was just telling me how Texas is one of the last frontiers of where you can still do stand-up comedy. He's like, if you're a stand-up comedian and that's all you know and that's what you do, he's like, you pretty much got to come to Texas. And if you're a Canadian and you ain't got your paperwork right, you're shit out of luck. (laughs) So... He's been keeping me up to date with some of the... He, he basically says Canada's insane. Like, it, it's... People are disowning family members. Like, their division between, like, anti-masker, masker, anti-vaxxer, vaxxer. And the lockdowns are ridiculous. So, check this out. Hamilton locks down Monday, March 29th. What does lockdown look like? Lockdown lasts indefinitely. Reevaluated every Friday. Travel between zones. Only for essential reasons. I.e. essential work essential caregiver, etc. Schools and child care, open unless specified otherwise. Indoor, only allowed with own household or with one other household if living alone. Outdoor, max 10 people socially distanced. Religious events, weddings, funerals, 15% capacity. Restaurants, indoor seating is closed, patios open. Recreational facilities and gyms, closed for indoor use. Libraries, pickup only. Non-essential stores and malls open at 25% capacity, example, clothing stores. Lineups outside of the stores. Essential stores open at 50% capacity, example, groceries. Personal care services closed, example, no haircuts. Will open on April 12th, five people by appointment. Theaters closed, only drive-ins are open. Animal services, example, vets and grooming, open. Driving tests and instructions canceled, virtual only. Golf courses, outdoors open, buildings closed, source, Government of Ontario. Yeah. So if you're an American and you live in a red state like Texas or Florida and you still have your liberties and your freedoms, congratulations. If you live in Canada 
Uh, we feel very bad for you. If you live in a blue state where you're still not allowed to, allowed to do a lot of stuff, we feel very bad. And um, Jason R- Rouse, he says he has a handful of comedians. He wants to bring them to Texas for like a week and a half or something, put them up at Airbnb. And he's like, if you have any shows coming up and you need these fools to get some time, like they're, they want to perform. They just want to be around people and they just want to do what they know how to do. And it's sad, man. That's, yeah, man. I, I don't know. It, again, welcome to the Common Sense Show, as we like to call RPT. A lot of this shit ain't common sense to people, and it's a little uh, disturbing that it's not. All, all everyone's asking, I mean, all people that maybe tune into this is, let me do what I do and say the fuck about my business. I will continue to be a contributing member to society. I will pay my taxes. I will do well. I will not harm anybody. I'm going to do me. That's it. And we can't have that. And then I think some some statistic was like, out of the people that passed, and now I have to be careful, right? Because, uh, you know, YouTube. The percentage of people that passed from El Virus, and it was only El Virus, like it wasn't no comorbidity. I think it was like 6% or something like that. So 94% of folks that didn't pull through with El Virus had a whole bunch of other stuff going on. Mm. So, And there's a lot of stuff coming out from... Um I guess we can end with this uh, from across the across the pond con la vacuna, si, la uh, vacuna. that is sounding pretty gnarly when it comes to uh, gnarly good or gnarly bad. Gnarly bad, a la madre. So yeah, I'll just I will I'll see how much yeah, we I can don't... actually say before we even speculate on it. But it's pretty nuts. Yeah, things ca- happening to the uh, cerebro and such. Really? Yeah. What's the source on that? Uh, their actual government mm. and which one out of the three or four do you know uh, i don't remember is it the two dose one dose it's another one that i hadn't even seen the name of yeah. honestly but i guess it's, that's what their version of what we're taking here is what yeah. they're so again. i think i think rogan said he was down to take the one dose but that he's in no hurry he's like i'm on so much stuff yeah he's they have the healthiest man on every you know stem cell regenikine uh, growth TRT. testosterone yeah like alpha brain what the fuck you don't need it on everything He's on everything. Earth thing. Ladies right, and man. gentlemen, send us was, out. That was uh, RPT season four, episode number 40. Shout out to the patrons. If you are not a patron, now's a great time. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales and see what we have on the menu. Uh, multiple shows, lots of content. You get it first. Join and be a member of the TIA, the Tamal Intelligence Agency. Many people say that the Raza is the most gullible group on the planet. That the raza don't really look into stuff. The raza just believes whatever the mainstream tells them. And I think that's changing. I don't believe that. I don't subscribe to the idea that the raza just are sheep. So let's prove them wrong and hit up patreon.com forward slash red pill I will see you in a city near you. New Braunfels, Texas. You're up next. And then Colleen. Thank you so much. Sass.